and make sure if you guys are liking the video so far, hit the like button, subscribe to the Shameless O'Leary YouTube channel and the Vegan Athlete YouTube channel. Check out Shameless at his Facebook page, the link's below, and check me out at jakemace.com. And stay till the end of the video because we have a bonus tip that you're gonna wanna see for sure. Oh, God dang, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete, and I'm here with my man, Seamus O'Leary. We're back together again, and we're here to show you guys in this episode how to frost protect your new trees that are so cute and delicate. We have a star fruit tree here today. How are we gonna protect this guy? What we're going to do is four stakes are gonna be placed around the tree, a little higher than the tree itself, okay? A little further out, and then we're going to wrap it encase it in a plastic, a six mil painter's plastic. And that's gonna be wrapped around the sides, the tops, we're gonna to staple together. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna walk our viewers through how to protect your trees in the winter. So two questions, one, why make the stakes above and to the outside of the tree and why plastic? Plastic, my personal opinion, holds more heat. Oh, okay, now, like a greenhouse. Correct, the downside is, is that you do need to open it during the day during so the, the day. tree can breathe. Right. But at night, we want as much heat as possible. I do not like to use uh, frost blankets or fabric because it's porous. Mm -hmm. I like the plastic because it'll hold a little bit more of the warmth in. So yes, you do have to open it during the day, but that's fine, that's really not a lot of work. It takes about a second and a half. And the stakes being above and beyond the tree because you don't want the cloth touching, or the plastic touching the leaves. Correct, the fabric or the plastic will transfer the cold. Oh. So if the foliage is touching the plastic, plastic gets cold, the tree's gonna get cold as well too. It will, it will die at that spot. Right, so you wanna create a tent around the tree. Uh -huh. You don't wanna wrap the tree up. You wanna create a tent around the tree to trap the ground heat and then any supplemental heat that you're providing. Mm -hmm. uh, you wanna keep the foliage away from the plastic at least a couple inches through the top and the sides. And of course, we're gonna show you guys step by step how we do this, but also how far down should the plastic go to the ground? It should touch the ground at minimum, okay. and then actually roll out a few inches so right. that you can place rocks and bricks to hold it down mm -hmm. because you don't want the wind to come through at night and yank it off. Yeah, Also, or snap want... the tree in half. Exactly. I've had that before. And you also want to trap the ground heat because yeah. the earth will put off a couple degrees of heat over the course of the night. So if it's touching the ground, it'll catch that, kind of like a chimney. Kind of like geothermal, we're kind of harnessing the Earth's heat. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. We need some energy for this video. We're gonna do a lot of work today. We've got a few uh, tools to show you guys, but first, we gotta have fresh figs from the honey fig tree. So there's one for you, one for me, and one for the camera person. This will give us our energy there. Mm. Is it right? It's getting there, pretty good. Needs to be deep fried. <laughs> deep fried, oh man. The tools you're gonna need to successfully protect your trees are as follows. You need some stakes or PVC plastic tubing. Correct. We're gonna use stakes today because I'm gonna try to be a little more eco-friendly and I had these wooden stakes already so I figured why buy more stuff. A staple gun, a rubber hammer so I don't split the stakes, and you've got, what do you got there? I have a six mil plastic. That is, this particular piece is reinforced with thread. Huh. Uh, normally Six you're not mil. gonna find this at a Home Depot. This is kind of a, a fancy plastic that a, a friend this, of mine gave me. The secret Seamus O'Leary store. Yes, exactly. Uh, but generally at Home Depot or Lowe's you can find rolls, 50 foot rolls of a six mil painter's plastic. Okay. That'll work just fine. Step one should be to pound these stakes in? Correct. We're gonna start by taking four stakes and putting one on each corner around the tree and then pound it in with my rubber mallet. All right, the stakes are in, we're ready for the plastic. Full disclosure, I got this carambola or starfruit tree from Seamus O'Leary's from your place, and it's growing great this summer, but it was in like a two, three gallon pot, so it was small, um, and it's growing bigger every season. So if we get it to overwinter and stay healthy, I know it's gonna just be an amazing tree next summer. Generally the rule with plants are is they take a, a full calendar year for the roots to get established. Okay. So if we can get them through one calendar year, a winter, a summer, 
Uh, after that, they're going to need a lot less babying. Yeah. So that's the key. The first year, baby them. Shade in the summer, cold protection in the winter. Cool. And make sure if you guys are liking the video so far, hit the like button, subscribe to the Seamus O'Leary YouTube channel and the Vegan Athlete YouTube channel. Check out Seamus at his Facebook page, the link's below, and check me out at jakemace.com. And stay till the end of the video because we have a bonus tip that you're going to want to see for sure. What's our next step? Next step is we're going to unroll the plastic and we're going to measure out what we need to encase it, sides and top. So you're going to wrap the sides and then drape the top? Correct. Let's do it. This helps if you've got a buddy, right? Yes, or an acquaintance, <laughs> or a friend, or a relative. Or somebody, a neighbor you paid off. Sometimes buddies cost you money, so Ooh. it's easier to just grab somebody off the street. Yeah, I'm expensive. <laughs> so why don't I hold the high part and you can tell me when it's on the ground. So I'm gonna start stapling the sides while he untangles the plastic. Okay, so you really want to wrap this guy. I do. From the top, start with the staples here. And then slowly go around. Yes. How many trees get to protect? Just this one, right? Sure. Or do we have to do this 250 times? So for those people watching, what about protecting deciduous trees like mulberry, or peach, plum, apricot. Deciduous trees do not need any protection. They want cold. You do nothing with those in the winter. They need the cold. They actually want more cold than what we get normally. How about citrus? Citrus leave alone. They can take it. Yeah. Of the tropical plants, tropical trees, what are some of the more cold tolerant varieties? Like guava, things like this. Guava, banana, bamboo, chicos, white sapote. Loquat, definitely. Loquat never need any protection. And so of those ones you just listed, those are the more cold tolerant varieties. More cold tolerant of the trees that we carry, yes. Right, of the subtropicals, tropicals, things like that. Correct. Yeah, cool. God dang, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so we have sufficiently wrapped our starfruit tree. We have encased it. It's been entombed. It's in a cocoon. Entombed, yes. Entombed. Mummified. Now, what's next? The top. Uh, the top, and there's two things that you can do. Mm -hmm. This one's kind of tall, so it's gonna be a little difficult as far as cutting a piece and getting up there and closing it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also just throw a bed sheet across the top. And save the plastic. Yeah, and that way you can leave this up during mm -hmm. the day, through the winter. Yeah. Just throw the sheet across the top, and I'll take care of that, and then when the daytime comes, just take the sheet off. And you said we can also put some bricks or rocks down below to trap it against the ground. Definitely, yeah. Now mm -hmm. this has been pulled pretty tight, so you can see it's probably not gonna need a whole heck of a lot. There's nothing here to blow away. Right. Because we've done it correctly. And we've staple gunned it toward the base. Correct. Basically that going around. And that's it. That's it. That looks pretty good. Yeah. I would think that if it got to 28 degrees here, I would be pretty confident that this would protect the tree. You could sleep outside in this. Yeah. It's like okay. a sleeping bag for the tree. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll sleep outside in a plastic cocoon to experience what the trees experience. Maybe your, my, your wife might put you out here one night. I think know, she might. When you act up. Yeah. That's true. Well, my neighbor always tells me one thing. If there's a looming frost coming, he always waters the trees deeply the day before the frost. Is that Correct. helpful? A hydrated plant will take a little bit more cold than a dried, stressed out plant. Really? So okay. in many of the commercial orchards in Florida and California, Arizona, mm -hmm. they'll flood the fields the evening that it's supposed to be really, really cold. Uh, and also the water puts off a little bit of heat. Okay. And I promise you guys watching, if you stuck to the end of the video, we'd have a bonus tip for you guys. So what did you bring to ensure that this tree will not freeze? I have behind you here a halogen shop light. Looks like that. $13. And the reason I like these is because they have a stand so they can sit right on the ground and they put off a wide uh, spectrum of light, of heat. Okay. I'm not a fan of Christmas lights. Okay. Christmas lights do not put off that much heat. They look pretty, they sound cool, but 
you want the plant to stay warm. And so an LED light won't cut it even though it's energy efficient, it's not hot. Correct. But we need to use a little bit of power to protect these trees in year one. Right. So we're using a non-efficient bulb, but we're saving the life of a tree. Correct. So let's pretend that a looming 25 degree night is coming. Correct. And we need to give this guy some extra protection on top of the frost cloth. Right. And just to be clear, plastic is generally enough when we're in the 30s. I see. Depending on the tree, of course. But for most of the subtropicals, this is going to be enough in the 30s. Mm -hmm. I bring the lights out when we start getting to 30 and below. Okay. Okay. Cool. And then what we're going to do, place the shop light underneath here. Facing up. Yep. Then you also have a nice uh, nighttime light motif to entertain Correct. your guests. If you want to come out and read a book or do whatever. There you go. And that's all you need to do. Uh, it is best to set the light on a timer oh. because you don't need the light on at 8 p.m. Right. Uh, it seems like the coldest part of the night is actually the early morning. So 4, 5, 6 a.m. is yeah. when it seems to get the coldest. So and That's when like the frost that, sets in too. Exactly. So I like to have the light come on maybe at midnight to start warming things up or even 1 a.m. depending on what the temps are and the weather's like and then shut off about 8 a.m. when the sun is starting to come up. Okay. You don't need it on for 12 hours, maybe four or five hours. These trees are subtropical, so they're not gonna deal with 20s. Even when they're mature, you're gonna you lose some foliage right. if you do nothing with it. Uh, if you don't mind starting over in the spring, mm -hmm. then leave it alone. But if you want to save the growth that you've gotten, the progress that you've made the previous year to, plastic, five minutes worth of plastic and wood stakes will suffice. So it just depends on what you wanna put into it. And also what the microclimate is around the tree. Yeah, last winter I had a carambola starfruit from you. I had a longin from you and a loquat that I never even had to cover because they were under the canopy of moringa trees. Correct. And yeah. Fine. Foliage of other trees actually provides about three to four degrees of heat. That's amazing. When you have open sky, it yeah. gets a lot colder. Hmm. So in my yard, what I'll do with a lot of the potted plants that are too big to move on to the patio or into the greenhouse, mm -hmm. I'll park them underneath the big carob tree or the hakarandas, and that'll provide enough warmth that they've generally been okay. Nice. So every year, even if it's full mature, you don't cover it, it might defoliate and you start over again the next spring with a mature tree because the branch and trunk survives. But if Correct. you cover it, you might not lose that leaves and then you're gonna be supercharged for next summer, full of fruit production and whatnot. Correct, I have a cool. star fruit in my yard that's about five years old. Mm -hmm. It's frozen back to the ground completely twice now. And come back. So every, it's come back and it's a beautiful tree now, mm -hmm. but it has to start over every two years because I yeah. do nothing with it. I get a little lazy and it dies comes back, but we haven't gotten fruit off it in five years, mm. whereas we should have if I would have done something like this. So this year, definitely I'm gonna be prepared because I wanna get a lot of fruit off this large star fruit tree that I have at home. And to end this video, final stage, put it on top, right? Correct. Let's do this. Here we go. And we have successfully protected my baby. And then what you want to do with this, you don't want to leave the sheet just laying on here, right? but actually maybe just tie some string or twine around to kind of hold it in place so the wind doesn't take it off. Correct. But right there, you're good to go. And then the next morning when the sun comes out, take the plastic off, let it breathe during the day, and then back on at night. Well, actually with this method, you oh. can leave the plastic on here oh, all winter, just take, just take off. the top off. Oh, that's nice. Makes things a lot easier because this is a little bit of a hassle putting this yeah. together. So just take the top off, it can breathe. It's fine, we're getting plenty of sunlight with yeah. the plastic, we're good. That's amazing. Well, thanks for coming over and uh, showing us this important lesson. Hopefully you guys were inspired and learned something. Hit the like button, show us some love, subscribe to our channels, check us out on Facebook and at jakemace.com. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys back here for our next episode.